One of the things you speak specifically about that I'm so interested in is like just the intersections between like race, queerness, and pop culture. And you know a lot about pop culture, obviously, but how do you see like these identities and like the cultural kind of like forces shaping the experiences of like the LGBTQ plus community and like the people of today? Like, how do you see those things like um, interacting with each other? Um, one of my friends who's also an author, um, one of my favorites, Janet Mock, I think when she was promoting her first book, Redefining Realness, she talked about how for a lot of people who grow up without a lot of means, which is more so how we relate it, because when I read her book on a plane, I found her fascinating, her story fascinating, but then I was like, well, girl, our dad sounds like the same person sometimes. Mm -hmm. But she mentioned how for a lot of people, pop culture is their access point to a world that they otherwise wouldn't know. Um, a lot of that is related to just class, but particularly when it comes to like queer people who grow up in probably environments and communities where at least of a certain age, well, actually any age in America, but you know, you're not necessarily exposed to as many people around you or if it's kind of like met with shame and silence and particularly how I grew up, I'm, I feel like I'm that last, part of that last generation where people are really kind of forced into a closet. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, we might be pushed back in given the next election, but it, I digress. But yeah, I think for a lot of people, it was just that access point. So for me, even in before I sold out Candy Jesus, because it took a lot of convincing to for people to believe that there was a market for my voice and what I had to say, mm -hmm. I wrote about how like Janet Jackson taught me about sex. Um, when she did the Janet album, I was only nine years old, but I used to like have a, I used to like one of her dancers, Omar Lopez, which I mentioned in the first book. Um, I had my button untied, but <laughs> but I used to always like consume a lot of information. Like I have an older sister, she's nine years older. So I would read her magazines. I would go buy magazines myself and my mom would take me. She did an interview with Rolling Stone where she talked about being like a late bloomer and how mm -hmm. sexuality for her was a means of her embracing her sexuality more and being more open about it helped her in home like development. I'm a paraphrasing, but that's not unlike, you know, a lot of queer people. That's not like un unlike a lot of people. So mm -hmm. for me, I gravitated to people like that. Uh, Mary J. Blige, the way she opened up about her emotions and kind of like, you know, cycles of abuse, addiction that she had been around. These were a lot of things that, you know, theoretically were too young for someone my age, but because I was exposed to so much in the mm -hmm. chaos of my childhood, you know, they were like, again, my access points, they were, they helped me articulate feelings that I couldn't yet. They helped me feel less alone. Even as I got older, when it comes to Beyonce, I love her obviously because she's from Houston and the greatest. And I'm like the first stand, but mm -hmm. at the same time, you know, she, I think she often, uh, doesn't often get a lot of credit for the subcultures that she included. Like if you're black and you kind of grew up on that like East Texas, Houston, got like borderline, you know, Louisiana, like the bounce music, the sissy culture, what they call sissy bounce back then. Mm -hmm. A lot of people didn't know what that was, but you know, you got drag queens and like, you know, I say colloquially the punks in the background <laughs> dancing, you know, that helped me feel comfortable with the, the stereotype about like effeminate men and kind of like letting mm -hmm. that go and like not mm -hmm. being defined by that. So I don't know, for me, a lot of the pop culture stuff, not to could repeat, but it just, for me, yeah, I read books and there's academic theory and all of that, but a lot of times people just want something that they can watch and buy and hold mm -hmm. on to that isn't so above. Mm -hmm. And I think pop culture, while, you know, in some cases we maybe rely on it too much, but at the same time, that's all we have, you know, because mm -hmm. I wasn't able to learn this in schools. It wasn't talked about in church for sure. It wasn't talked about around people. So these are all the women who really helped me figure myself out. Um, mm -hmm. So I think it was only right that I incorporate that in my work one because it's just true and also you know i kind of for a long time really talked in pop culture i just couldn't help it mm -hmm. um it's just a lot of my consumer i mean i i also am like into politics but a lot of people don't care and i get it so <laughs> even then it's just easier to 